When we first pulled up to the quaint Airbnb in the sleepy town, it looked every bit the peaceful retreat we had hoped for. The house, with its charming front porch and blooming flower beds, seemed the perfect spot for our weekend getaway. I'm John, by the way, a software developer from the city. Beside me in the driver's seat was Mia, my wife, whose sharp eye for detail serves her well in her career as a freelance editor. In the back seat, immersed in her latest mystery novel, was our teenage daughter, Lucy. As I unloaded our bags, Mia handled the check-in process on her phone. That's when she paused, frowning slightly. That's odd, she murmured, scrolling back through the Airbnb listing. The cleaning fee is almost as much as the rental itself. She showed me the screen. Indeed, the fee was unusually high. And look at these reviews, she continued, a hint of suspicion in her voice. Every single one praised the house's impeccable condition, which was unusual in itself. This piqued our curiosity. Why would a rental require such a hefty cleaning fee if everyone left it spotless? This little anomaly, though seemingly insignificant, was enough to add a slight edge to our otherwise relaxed anticipation. Little did we know, this was just the beginning of a series of peculiar discoveries. As we stepped into the house, welcomed by its cozy interior, a lingering question hung in the air, unspoken, but palpable. What exactly were we walking into? As we began unpacking, Lucy shouted from the corner of her room, her voice tinged with excitement and disbelief. Mom, Dad, come look at this. We hurried over to find her standing in front of a small, cleverly concealed door that she had stumbled upon behind a movable wardrobe. Curiosity outweighed our initial hesitation, and together, we pushed the door open to reveal a dimly lit, cramped room filled with an assortment of objects, books, photographs, and various personal belongings that clearly didn't belong to the house or to us. The air was stale, as if the room hadn't been opened for a long time. Among the scattered items, Lucy picked up a worn journal. The name, Sarah, was etched into the cover. Flipping through the pages, we found entries filled with apprehension and distrust towards the landlord. Sarah wrote about feeling watched and how certain things around the house didn't seem right. Her last entry was unsettlingly abrupt, ending mid-sentence as though she'd been suddenly interrupted. Later that evening as we settled in, a subtle yet unmistakable sense of unease began to creep over us. It started with small, almost dismissible incidents. A book I was sure I'd left on the bedside table was found on the couch, Mia's glasses moved from the bathroom shelf to the kitchen counter, and Lucy's sneakers, which she had kicked off by the front door, were now neatly lined up in the closet. Each instance on its own seemed trivial, but together they wove a tapestry of fear that draped over our shoulders, heavy and discomforting. These disturbances, minor yet jarring, transformed our initial excitement into a gnawing suspicion. Coupled with the discovery of the hidden room in Sarah's journal, it became increasingly clear that something about this house was very wrong. We were no longer just guests. We felt like pawns in a game we didn't understand, each move sinking us deeper into an unsettling mystery that this house, and perhaps its owner, had ensnared us in. As the night deepened, I found myself drawn back to Sarah's journal, the dim light of my bedside lamp casting long shadows across the page. Her words, once merely curious and unsettling, now seemed to throb with urgency. My heart raced as I deciphered her shaky handwriting, piecing together her quiet investigation into the landlord's activities. It wasn't just paranoia. She had started connecting him to various financial frauds involving other properties he owned. Her entries hinted at a network of deceit, with this house potentially serving as the epicenter of his unsavory dealings. Sarah's words echoed in my mind. I feel like I'm being watched. It's not just the house, it's him. He's always finding excuses to come by, checking on things, but I know he's checking on me. Her fear was palpable, jumping off the page and settling thickly in the pit of my stomach. That night, every creak and whisper of the house made us jump. The idea that we, like Sarah, were being watched, transformed our retreat into a cage. My wife, Mia, confessed hearing footsteps late at night when everyone else was asleep, and Lucy admitted that she sometimes felt like someone was peeking through her windows. 
it became clear that we weren't alone in this house. Someone else, likely the landlord himself, had access and was far too interested in his temporary tenants. The realization that our every move might be monitored tightened the noose of paranoia around us, making the walls of the charming rental feel ominously close. Determined to unearth the truth, I decided it was time to turn the tables. Utilizing my skills as a software developer, I rigged several hidden cameras throughout the house. The idea of spying on our own temporary home felt bizarre, yet necessary. Mia and Lucy, equally driven by a need for answers, helped position the cameras in strategic locations, covering all entry points in the mysterious hidden room. Two restless nights passed before our efforts bore fruit. Checking the footage early one morning, my hands shook as I saw the grainy image of the front door quietly opening at an ungodly hour. It wasn't a burglar, but the landlord, our ever-smiling host who slipped inside. Beside him was a figure I recognized from town, the local detective. Their behavior was furtive, their whispers urgent as they made their way directly to the hidden room. My family crowded around the computer, watching with bated breath as the scene unfolded. The audio was muffled, but clear enough. Make sure it looks like they found it themselves, the landlord hissed, a sinister tone in his voice. Once they call it in, the insurance pays out, and they take the fall. The detective nodded, complicit in a scheme that was chillingly calculated. They were setting us up, planning to use us as pawns in their fraudulent game, framing us for discovering contraband or stolen goods that they themselves had planted. As the reality of their plan sunk in, rage and fear knotted in my chest. These men were not just violating our privacy, they were orchestrating our downfall. We now had the evidence we needed, but the threat was far from over. It was clear that our supposed calm stay was actually the stage for a nefarious plot, and we were the unwitting actors. Now, armed with the truth, we had to decide our next move carefully. The battle lines were drawn, and it was time to confront our deceptive host and his accomplice, armed not just with our cameras, but with the element of surprise on our side. With the damning evidence secured, we knew what had to be done next. Early that morning, under the faint glow of dawn, Mia, Lucy, and I huddled around the kitchen table, devising our plan of action. The atmosphere was charged, a mix of anxiety and a collective resolve fueling us. We decided to reach out to a well-respected investigative journalist known for uncovering local corruption. With meticulous detail, we laid out everything. The hidden room, Sarah's journal, and most importantly, the footage of the landlord and detective. The journalist was quick to act, sensing the gravity of the story. Within hours, he arrived at our rental, equipped with a discreet camera and an air of quiet determination. Together, we reviewed the evidence, his experience guiding the unfolding narrative. By the afternoon, he had everything he needed to not only write a compelling expose, but to involve the authorities. By evening, Police cars quietly converged on our rental. The landlord and the detective, caught off guard and unable to concoct a plausible denial, were taken into custody. As news of their arrest spread, the community reeled from the revelations. Neighbors and local news outlets gathered, clamoring for details. The scale of the landlord's and detective's crimes began to unravel, exposing a history of manipulated evidence and wrongfully accused tenants. Our proactive approach not only cleared our names, but also protected future tenants from falling into a similar trap. As the sun set on that tumultuous day, the sense of relief was palpable, but so was the awareness of the deep-seated corruption we had helped uncover. As we packed to leave the now eerie quiet of the house, Mia stumbled upon another hidden compartment under the floorboards in the living room. Inside, a stack of files labeled with names and dates chronicled a chilling list of past victims and future targets. It was a sobering reminder of the depth of the landlord's network, hinting at a criminal enterprise more extensive than we had imagined. As I pulled into the driveway of the quaint Airbnb nestled in the heart of a small, charming town renowned for its hospitality, something didn't quite sit right. The picturesque scene before me, complete with flower-lined pathways and warmly lit windows, promised a serene escape. Yet a thread of unease wove through my excitement. I'm Alex, 
a travel blogger who's made a career out of my no-filter, brutally honest reviews. Something about this place set off a tiny alarm in my mind, stirring a curiosity that went beyond its perfect ratings. The host had greeted me with a wide, rehearsed smile, and the house, while immaculate, felt almost too perfect, like a stage set ready for performance. As I scrolled back through the photos and comments from previous guests on my phone, I noticed subtle discrepancies. Two stiff poses, overly enthusiastic praise without details, and personal touches that seemed conspicuously absent. It was these oddities that had first caught my eye online and prompted me to book this place. Something about the continuous stream of five-star reviews just didn't add up, and I was here to find out why. The room greeted me with an air of meticulous preparation, every cushion plumped, every surface gleaming under the soft glow of table lamps. It should have been comforting, yet it sent a chill down my spine. It wasn't just well prepared, it was staged, every item calculatedly placed to create an impression of perfection. As I unpacked, my gaze caught a subtle glint from the bookshelf, a camera cleverly disguised as a bookend. Scanning the room, I spotted more. The realization that I was being watched set my nerves on edge. Driven by a mix of determination and rising fear, I began to search the room more thoroughly. In the bottom of the wardrobe, behind a false panel, I found a locked drawer. A few minutes with a paperclip, and it clicked open, revealing an old, dusty guest book. The creak of its spine as I opened it seemed to echo through the room. Inside, the pages told a different story than the pristine online reviews. Guests spoke of unease, of feeling watched, of subtle threats disguised as accidents. Curious and increasingly suspicious, I pulled out my phone to look up some of the names from the guest book. Social media searches led to dead ends, profiles recently deactivated or scrubbed clean. My heart pounded harder with each discovery. The picturesque facade of the town and its charming Airbnb was cracking revealing a sinister underbelly. I knew I had stumbled onto something big, something dangerous, but I couldn't turn back now. I decided to take my investigation to the streets, mingling with the locals under the guise of a curious tourist. The town, with its quaint shops and friendly faces, seemed the epitome of small-town charm. But as I broached the subject of the Airbnb, the atmosphere shifted palpably. Shopkeepers became terse, their smiles tightening when I mentioned the guest book. At the local cafe, an elderly waiter advised me under his breath to enjoy my stay and not ask too many questions. It was clear. The town was protective of its secrets. Later, I met an old fisherman by the river who, after some coaxing, revealed the heart of the town's silence. The Airbnb was more than just a rental. It was the lifeline of the town's economy, attracting tourists and their wallets. There was an unspoken pact among the locals to maintain its perfect image at all costs. The revelation sent a shiver down my spine, complicating my mission. This wasn't just about one deceptive host. It was about a whole community. As I left the riverbank, I noticed a nondescript car trailing behind me. At first, I thought it was coincidence, but every turn I took, it followed. The realization that I was being watched wasn't just paranoia. It was a confirmation that I was treading dangerous waters. The deeper I dug into the truth, the more I felt the ominous weight of unseen eyes upon me. My resolve hardened, but so did my fear. Whoever was behind this was determined to keep their secrets safe. Back at the Airbnb, my mind racing with the day's chilling discoveries, I confronted the host. He had just returned from town, his demeanor as welcoming as our first meeting, but now I saw through the facade. When I slammed the dusty guest book on the table, his expression shifted from surprise to resignation. Yes, there are cameras, he admitted, his voice low and strained. It's not just me, Alex. The whole town depends on the success of this place. If you try to expose this, it's not just my livelihood at stake. His warning was veiled but clear. There were greater risks involved than I had initially understood. As we spoke, I pressed him about the entries in the guest book. With a heavy sigh, he confessed that guests who had threatened to reveal the truth had met with unfortunate incidents. A car brake failure here. A fall down the stairs there. It was enough to silence many, 
and for those who weren't deterred, the town made sure they couldn't spread their stories. Fueled by a mix of anger and a commitment to my readers, I made my decision. That night, I sat down in the very room where I'd been watched and started typing. Live on my blog, I began to detail everything. The surveillance, the guest book, the town's dark pact, even the threat to my own safety. As I typed, I posted photos of the guest book pages, the hidden cameras, and screenshots of the deactivated social media profiles. I tagged it as a live investigation, urging my followers to share widely. If anything happens to me, I wrote, let it be known why. The stakes were immense, but the truth was more important. As I hit publish, the weight of potential repercussions loomed large, but so did the hope that exposing the darkness would prevent others from falling into the same trap. The morning after I published my initial findings, I discovered my car with all four tires methodically slashed, the sharp cuts a silent but clear message. Returning to my room, the sight of my belongings strewn across the floor, drawers emptied and my equipment tampered with, hammered home the severity of my situation. Every move was a calculated intimidation tactic, aimed to silence me. Fearing for my safety and the possibility of being forcefully stopped, I took a decisive step to safeguard the investigation. I gathered all the evidence, copies of the guest book, recorded videos of the hidden cameras, and all correspondences. I compiled them into a detailed dossier and sent it to a journalist friend who had a reputation for tackling corruption. My instructions were clear. If I went silent, or if anything happened to me, she was to publish everything immediately. No holds barred. This backup plan was my lifeline. A way to ensure the story would outlive any attempts on my part to be silenced. As I secured my digital trails and prepared for any further repercussions, the weight of isolation in a hostile town pressed down on me, but the need to expose the truth kept me resolute. With my blog post tearing through the internet, the atmosphere in the town turned palpably hostile. I hastily packed my things, the air thick with tension and the silent stares of the locals. As I drove away from the Airbnb, the weight of countless eyes followed me, their glares a mixture of anger and fear. As the town faded in my rearview mirror, I kept glancing back, half expecting to be followed. Just as I reached a safer distance, my phone pinged with an email from my friend. It's gone viral, she wrote. Everyone's talking about it. Relief washed over me, mingled with a persistent unease. The screen of my life darkened to black as I drove into an uncertain future. The final message from another concerned reader echoing in my mind. Consider what your silence is worth. The haunting implication of the town's far-reaching influence and the unresolved threats to my safety cast a chilling shadow, leaving me to ponder the ominous paths that might still lie ahead. As I steered my car up the narrow gravel path, the city's relentless noise faded into a serene hush, punctuated only by the rustle of leaves and distant bird calls. I had rented a secluded cabin, nestled deep in the woods, to escape the ceaseless demands of urban life and to focus on my next novel. The idea was to find peace and solitude, to let the quiet of nature inspire my words. Stepping out of the car, I stretched and breathed in the crisp, pine-scented air, a stark contrast to the smog and smoke back home. As I approached the rustic cabin, something on the weathered wooden doorstep caught my eye. A letter. Picking it up, I noticed the envelope was fresh, not weathered or worn as one might expect in such an exposed spot. Unfolding the paper, I read the elegantly penned words that praised the beauty and spirit of someone named Elena, the cabin's previous tenant. The script was flowing and adorned with an old-fashioned flourish, the tone intimate and adoring. This unexpected discovery sent a shiver of curiosity down my spine. Who was Elena, and what had become of her? The letter hinted at a story yet to be uncovered, and already, the quiet retreat seemed less lonely than I had anticipated. Over the next few days, my exploration of the cabin revealed more letters, each tucked away in the most unexpected places, behind loose bricks in the fireplace, beneath floorboards, and inside old, dusty books on the shelves. The handwriting was always the same, passionate and meticulous, spilling secrets of undying love and heartfelt promises to return. 
Each letter peeled back layers of an intense love story that seemed both beautiful and obsessive. With each new discovery, my initial intrigue deepened into a complex web of emotion. The words were poetic, full of longing and devotion, speaking to a profound connection between Elena and her mysterious admirer. Yet as romantic as they were, a chilling undertone threaded through them, a desperation that clung like the mist that settled each evening around the cabin. As the days passed, I couldn't shake off the sensation of being watched. It started subtly, a rustle just beyond the window, a shadow that flicked past the corner of my vision. At first, I chalked it up to the usual creaks and groans of an old cabin, or perhaps a deer moving through the brush. But one evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I distinctly saw a figure flitting between the trees. They were too far to identify yet close enough to unsettle me. The fleeting glimpses of this figure, always at the edge of my vision, made my heart race and filled the crisp air with a palpable tension. With each shadowy encounter, the cabin's tranquility was overshadowed by a growing sense of dread. What had I stumbled into? Was this reclusive sanctuary a witness to a love gone wrong? Or perhaps something darker? My thoughts churned as the wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it a story aching to be told. One rainy afternoon, while searching for more firewood in the cluttered shed behind the cabin, I stumbled upon a leather-bound diary partially hidden beneath a stack of old gardening tools. It was worn, its edges frayed, a silent sentinel of secrets. Flipping through the water-stained pages, I realized it belonged to Elena. The entries began playfully, full of hope and dreams, but as the pages turned, the tone shifted dramatically. Elena wrote of an admirer whose affection at first seemed flattering, but gradually became oppressive. His love letters, once a source of joy, had turned into a daily deluge of obsessive declarations. She described feeling trapped, watched, her every move monitored. Her final entries were frantic, filled with plans to escape, to find refuge far from her once beloved retreat. Intrigued and disturbed, I visited the nearby town the next day, hoping to glean more about Elena from the locals. The townsfolk were initially welcoming, sharing stories of her kindness and artistic spirit. However, when I steered the conversation towards her disappearance and her admirer, their demeanor changed. Eyes darted away, voices hushed, and subjects quickly changed. It was clear that Elena's admirer was known to them, and the mere mention of him stirred a collective unease. Their nervous reactions only fueled my determination to uncover the truth. Why would a town so warm hold such a chilling secret? What had really happened to Elena? The diary in my hands felt heavier with each unanswered question. One evening, as dusk painted the sky in shades of deep purple and gold, I returned from a walk to find the front door of the cabin slightly ajar. Trepidation gripped me as I pushed it open. There, sitting calmly by the fire, was a man whose presence was as unexpected as it was unsettling. He was rugged, with hands marked by the years of craftsmanship and his eyes held a depth that was both captivating and alarming. He introduced himself as Thomas, the local artisan responsible for many of the handcrafted items in the cabin. His voice was steady, but there was a tremor of emotion as he spoke of Elena, his love evident in every word. He admitted to writing the letters and waiting for her return, his confession tinged with sorrow and longing. As I listened, ready to confront him about the obsessive nature of his affection, he surprised me with a chilling revelation. Elena had not fled from his love, he claimed, but from something far more sinister that pervaded the cabin. He spoke of old legends, of dark happenings that the locals whispered about, but never acknowledged openly. According to Thomas, Elena had felt an oppressive presence, something that filled her with dread, pushing her to leave without a trace. His words hung heavy in the air, mixing with the crackle of the fire. Was this merely a diversion? A tale spun to mislead? Or had Elena truly sensed a malevolent force within these walls? Something so daunting that it drove her to vanish into the night. The cabin, with its creaking wood and shadows dancing on the walls, suddenly felt like a living entity, watching and listening to our every word. The mystery deepened, wrapping around us like the evening mist, thick and impenetrable. 
Compelled by Thomas's story and the enigmatic aura of the cabin, I decided to weave this tangled web of love and mystery into my next novel. Sensing Thomas's profound loss and the unresolved anguish that clouded his life, I agreed to help him find closure. Together, we conducted a symbolic act late one foggy evening, following an old local lore he shared. We released a handmade boat with a candle into the nearby lake, symbolizing Elena's spirit finding peace and moving on from the shadows that had trapped her here. As a precaution, and with a writer's instinct for preservation, I documented every detail of our conversations, the lore, and the peculiar events surrounding Elena's disappearance. I sent all this information to a trusted journalist friend, ensuring that if anything untoward happened to me, the story wouldn't die with my disappearance. This backup plan was my lifeline, tethered to the wider world beyond the eerie solitude of the cabin. With the final words of my novel penned, I packed my belongings, the cabin's air heavy with the lingering essence of unresolved secrets. As I closed the door behind me, a new letter placed on the doorstep, this time bearing my name. A shiver ran down my spine. The story I was leaving behind was far from finished. The cabin, with its deep, dark secrets, still had more to tell. The road ahead was open, and my mind buzzed with possibilities. What new tales were waiting to unfold?